Hi everyone and welcome to our first lesson in our honors topic all about patterns. Today's patterns is one of my favorites and it leads kind of into everything else. Today we're going to talk about the Fibonacci sequence. Okay, first we're going to read a little bit out of this cool The Math book. It talks about lots of different math topics and here's the page on Fibonacci. Fibonacci's name is actually Leonardo of Pisa, um, but he was, which means, you know, he lived in Pisa and his name was Leonardo. Awesome. Um, he's been referred to as, without a doubt, the most original and most capable mathematician of the medieval Christian world. So, you know, he kind of knew what he was doing. He was a wealthy Italian merchant, traveled through Egypt, Syria, and Barbary, which is Algeria now. And in 2000, no, 1202, so, you know, a while ago, he published the book Liber Abaci, which means the book of the abacus, which introduced the in Hindu Arabic numerals, which are the numbers we use today, and the decimal system to Western Europe. This system is now used throughout the world, having overcome the terribly cumbersome Roman numerals common in Fibonacci's time. In Libra Abaci, he notes there are the, these are the nine figures of the Indians, meaning like actually from India, um, and those are numbers. And with these nine figures and with the zero, which they called Zephyrum, any number can re be represented as, as will be demonstrated. Okay? Although Libra Abaci was not the first European book to describe the Hindu Arabic numerals, and even though decimal numerals did not gain wine, widespread use in Europe directly after its publication, the book is nevertheless considered to have had a strong impact on European thought because it was directed both to academians and business people. Notice he was a merchant, so he this was like practical stuff for him. This is what he personally needed in his life. Um, Libra Abaci is all, also introduced Western Europe to the famous number sequence 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, and so on. Notice you make this by adding the two previous terms to get the next one. 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, and so on. Okay, and this is called the Fibonacci sequence. Notice that except for the first two numbers, every successive number in the sequence equals the sum of the previous two. These numbers appear in an amazing number of mathematical disciplines in nature. Basically, these numbers are everywhere. Okay. Um, now Fibonacci, of course, is not the first one to actually discover this number pattern. You know, they knew about this number pattern in ancient India and all that stuff, but he was the European dude that figured it out and Europeans got to, I don't know, put their names on lots of things, even though other people figured them out first. So um, we're going to look at this fun little picture book I have now. It's called Growing Patterns. Fibonacci numbers in nature. So I kind of want to show you just right now all the different places that these Fibonacci numbers really are. Okay. A seed grows into a plant. When it is all grown up, it might be a tuft of grass, a daisy, or a tree. The seed has built, seed has built in instructions for how the plant will grow. What shape will it be? What size? What color? This peace lily, tiny little thing, has has white flowers always with one petal. The number of petals on a flower and the shapes and patterns they make come from two things, the plant's instructions and its growing conditions. This is a crown of thorns. Count the petals. Plus two. Are you catching Okay. This is a spider wart. Count the petals. Three. Notice a pattern. This is a flowering quince. Count the petals. One, two, three, four, five. You seen a pattern, guys? This is a cosmos. Count the petals. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Notice they're making a cool thing. We're actually going to make that in a little while. The number of petals on these flowers, one, two, three, five, and eight, have a special relationship to one another and to nature. Okay. Just like this story, which started with one seed and a flower with one petal, this pattern begins with a one and a one. To get to the next number, you add the one plus one, that equals two. This is the rule for these special numbers. In order to get to the next number, you add the two numbers before it, so the number after two is one plus two, which is three. And two plus three, which is five. And four. 3 plus 5, which is 8. 
People first wrote about these special numbers in ancient India, like I said, but today the numbers are named after an Italian mathematician. He was called Fibonacci. Over the years, people have noticed that the Fibonacci numbers are everywhere in nature. Here are more flowers with numbers of petals that equal Fibonacci numbers. Okay. So those are different flowers, but they still have the Fibonacci numbers. The numbers go higher and higher, always following the same rule. The number after 8 is 5 plus 8, which is 13, and so on. Okay, we've calculated those. The first 12 numbers in the Fibonacci sequence are these. So far, each of the numbers in these pictures has had one Fibonacci number, the number of petals. In pine cones, sunflowers, and pineapples, there are even more Fibonacci numbers. Oh, are you ready for this? It's very exciting. Dun, dun, dun. The bracts growing on the bottom of a pine cone look like petals, but each has a sharp tip. They grow out from the stem in spirals. All the pictures on these two pages show the same pine cone. On the next page, some of the spirals were printed darker to help you see the pattern. Okay, so you can see the spirals. You can either spiral this way, so start from the center and kind of go out like this, or you can go this way. Woo. So they'll show you on this next page. See? So you've got spiral this way, and notice how many spirals there are if you go this way. Do, 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 do. There's 13 going that way. If you go the other way, so we were going this way, now we go this way, and there's eight of those. 13 and eight are Fibonacci numbers. Count the spirals. Counting the spirals that go one way, it has eight, the other has 13. Those are both Fibonacci numbers. Okay, look at the disc of flowers, or <laughs> in the center of the sunflower, they grow in spirals too. Can you count the spirals? Like the pine cone, the sunflower makes two kinds of spirals. One curves in one direction, the other goes in the opposite direction. Okay, so if we spiral this way, there's 55 of them. <gasps> That's a Fibonacci number. And if we spiral this way, there's 34 of them. <gasps> When the Fibonacci numbers show up in the spirals, the numbers are always next to each other in the pattern. So they're kind of pairs. Weird, huh? Math and nature all together. What's happening? Yes, pineapples too. The sections on the outside of a pineapple grow in spirals. You would be able to count the spirals going in three directions if you could if you turn the pineapple as you count it. Okay, so we'll show you all three of them have different Fibonacci numbers. So there's our pineapple. If we scan this way, there's 13 stripes going that way. If we go this way, so we did one this way, then this way there's eight of them, and then we can go kind of straight around, and there's five of those. Okay? All Fibonacci numbers. What? Okay. Now we're going to make this thing in a minute. The third way we see Fibonacci numbers in nature is in a different kind of spiral. This time it is on an animal. The spiral starts at the beginning of the Fibonacci sequence and grows the same way the Fibonacci numbers grow. Look at the drawing on the next page. The spiral starts in a corner of the red square, curves through, and blah, 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 all the squares, okay? We are actually going to make this spiral in just a few minutes. All right. So this spiral is like the one that is formed by the Nautilus as it grows. The Nautilus is a sea animal, and its shell is similar to a snail's, just like the plant's. Animals have built-in instructions that determine how they grow. The pho photograph on the next page shows the inside of an empty nautilus shell. Can you see that spiral? It's the same. Like spirals, there's lots of different kinds of spirals, but this particular one matches the growth rate of the Fibonacci spiral exactly. All right. Not all numbers in nature are Fibonacci numbers. The dogwood has four petals and an emeralds has six. The garden snail and the fiddlehead on the fern are spirals, but they don't have the same shape as the nautilus. The next time you're outside, take a close look at the plants and animals. See if you can find Fibonacci numbers, spirals, or some other pattern. They are growing all around. Okay, so that was story time. Again, this was Growing Patterns by Sarah C. Campbell. Kind of fun. All right, now... What we're going to do is some math with the Fibonacci numbers now. We're going to start, get a head start on um, this worksheet. We're going to kind of do this worksheet while we watch a little video um, from the YouTubes. And I'm just going to hold it up to the TV because I couldn't figure out how else to do this. So, 
Um, here we go. First of all, list the first 12 numbers in the Fibonacci sequence. So um, go ahead and pause it if you want to fill it in before I get them all written down. I'm cheating because I have already written them down somewhere. <laughs> And just to be crazy, I'm going to add the 13th term to because I can. Alrighty. Now, the next thing we're going to do is square each of the numbers. And we're not going to square. We're only going to go up to like 13 squared. Okay. So squared means it's the number times itself. So 1 times 1 is 1. Uh, 1 times 1 is also 1. 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 3 is 9. 5 times 5 is 25, 8 times 8 is 64, 13 times 13 is 169. And if we want to be crazy, we can go up to 21 times 21, which is 441. Kicks and giggles. Okay, now we're going to add the square numbers. So this row, row 2, in the same pattern as we added the original Fibonacci numbers. So we're going to do 1 plus 1, which is 2. And then 2 plus 4 is 5. Sorry. <laughs> oh, because it's not 2 plus 4. Haha. <laughs> there. I was trying to figure out why it wasn't matching my other paper. 1 plus 4 is 5. 4 plus 9 is 13. 9 plus 25 is 64. And... That's not right. Sorry, I'm having a hard time copying my own paper. 9 plus 25 is 34. I got, I was looking on the wrong line. Sorry. All right. And then 34, let's see, 25 plus 64 is 89. And then to 33. That is 64 and 169. Okay. So now we're going to watch a little bit of that video. Um, he's going to describe the Fibonacci sequence again, and then um, while you're watching it, see if you can figure out what pattern or relationship you can see between these numbers and the original Fibonacci numbers. Okay, this is a TED Talk. So why do we learn mathematics? Essentially for three reasons. Calculation, application, and last, and unfortunately least, in terms of the time we give it, inspiration. Now I hope that all of my extra fun things that we've been doing this year have added a little bit to your mathematical inspiration. I sure have tried to make things interesting and awesome, and I will continue to do so for the rest of the year. Mathematics is the science of patterns, and we study it to learn how to think logically, critically, and creatively. But too much of the mathematics that we learn in school is not effectively motivated. And when our students ask, why are we learning this? Oops, sorry. And they often hear that they'll need it in an upcoming math class or on a future test. But wouldn't it be great if every once in a while we did mathematics simply because it was fun or beautiful or because it excites That is a fractal, and we're going to talk about it later in the week. Hee <laughs> hee, it's cool, right? But at the mind. Now, I know many people have not had the opportunity to see how this can happen, so let me give you a quick example with my favorite collection of numbers, the Fibonacci numbers. Yeah, I already have Fibonacci fans here. That's great. Now, these numbers can be appreciated in many different ways. From the standpoint of calculation, they're as easy to understand as 1 plus 1, which is 2. Then 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, 3 plus 5 is 8, and so on. Indeed, the person we call Fibonacci was actually named Leonardo of Pisa, and these numbers appear in his book, Liberabaci, which taught the Western world the methods of arithmetic that we use today. In Sorry, terms of application, <laughs> Fibonacci numbers appear in nature surprisingly often. Ooh, we the number read of about petals that. on a flower is typically a Fibonacci number. Or the number of spirals on a sunflower or a pineapple tends to be a Fibonacci number as well. 
In fact, there are many more applications of Fibonacci numbers, but what I find most inspirational about them are the beautiful number patterns they display. Let me show you one of my favorites. Suppose you like to square numbers, and frankly, who doesn't? Who doesn't? How, how, Let me show, how, how, how. Let's look at the squares of the first few Fibonacci numbers, okay? So one squared is one, two squared is four, three squared is nine, five squared is 25, and so on. All right, now, it's no surprise that when you add consecutive Fibonacci numbers, you get the next Fibonacci number, right? That's how they're created. But you wouldn't expect anything special to happen when you add the squares together. But check this out. One plus one gives us two, and one plus four gives us five. And <gasps> four plus nine is... Are you guys seeing the pattern now? Can you feel a number four on your paper? That's right. When you add the squares, you get every other Fibonacci number. Crazy patterns. 13, nine plus 25 is 34, and yes, the pattern continues. In fact, here's another one. Suppose you wanted to look at adding up the squares of the first few Fibonacci numbers. But okay, so we're gonna do that. Back to the paper. So hopefully you can fill in number four with the pattern that we just talked about. Next one, first we're gonna add the first three squared numbers. So we're back here to row two again, and we're gonna do one plus one plus four, which is six. And then we're gonna take six, which is one plus, plus one plus four, and then the next one is plus nine. And so that's six plus nine is 15. And then we do all of those and plus 25, which gives us 40. And then we do all of that again and add the 64. And we get 104 and so on. That's as far as we're gonna go, okay? So now look at these sums. They themselves are not Fibonacci numbers, right? But can you find a pattern that relates the Fibonacci numbers to the sums we just got. We're gonna watch a little bit more of the video and he will talk about that pattern. Coming up, here we go. Let's see what we got there. So one plus one plus four is six. Add nine to that, we get 15. Add 25, we get 40. Add 64, we get 104. Now look at those numbers. Those are not Fibonacci numbers, but if you look at them closely, you'll see the you Fibonacci ready? numbers buried inside of them. Do you see it? I'll show it to you. Six is two times three, 15 is three times five, 40 is five times eight, two, three, five, eight. Who do we appreciate? Fibonacci. Fibonacci, of course. Now, as much fun as it is, I think he's more enthusiastic about math than I am, which is pretty impressive. <laughs> to discover these patterns, it's even more satisfying to understand why they are true. Let's look at that last equation. Why should the squares of one, one, two, three, five, and eight add up to eight times 13? I'll show you by drawing a simple picture. Okay, so we're gonna right, we'll do start this. With a one. So have some graph paper ready, and I'm gonna help you with the pattern of how to make this all fit really well. So on your graph paper, and feel free to pause me if you need to, um, from the edge, wherever you want the edge of your picture to be, count over 16. So that's 16 squares over. And then I want you to count 11 squares down. And when you find that, so 16 over, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and then down 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and put a box there. That's our first one. Okay, go ahead and pause if you need more time. And then put a box above that. Okay, and now that was our one and our one. Now we need a two by two box for our two. And we're just going to draw to the side there. And then we need a three. Notice we're kind of filling our boxes in. A three by three. And now we've got five down that side. So we're gonna have a five by five box. 
And if we did our counting right, we should have eight up. <laughs> Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, we have even a little extra room. Cool. Okay. Now, so are you kind of putting together the pattern? So the squares added together create the dimensions of the new rectangle. And so that's why this pattern or this, the math works out the sum of the squares, and then the volume of the entire thing. So then, let's see, where are we now? We should be to 13, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. <gasps> it's like I planned it or something. Crazy. Right? We're going to fill this in. Do, 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 do. 13, and then what's after 13 is 21. I think this is the last one we'll be able to get to fit. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So we're going to here. That one got a lot bigger, a lot faster, huh? Do. And if we kept going, you know, if we had infinite size of paper, we could keep going. All right, but that's as much as we can fit on this one paper. Okay, so that's what he's about to do. And you kind of saw this. This is the beginning of where the spiral comes from, right? So let's go back to the video. Do, do, do. One by one square. And next to that, put another one by one square. Together they form a one by two rectangle. Beneath that, I'll put a two by two square, and next to that, a three by three square. Beneath that, a five by five square, and then an eight by eight square, creating one giant rectangle, right? Now let me ask you a simple question. What is the area of the rectangle? Well, on the one hand, it's the sum of the areas of the squares inside it, right? Just as we created it. It's 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 5 squared plus 8 squared, right? That's the area. On the other hand, because it's a rectangle, the area is equal to its height times its base. And the height is clearly 8, and the base is 5 plus 8, which is the next Fibonacci number, 13. Right? So the area is also 8 times 13. Since we've correctly calculated the area two different ways, they have to be the same number. And that's why the squares of 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, and 8 add up to 8 times 13. Now, if we continue this process, we'll generate rectangles of the form uh, 13 by 21, 21 by 34, and so on. Now, check this out. If you divide 13 by 8, you get 1.625. And if you divide... Okay, so this is our next bit. If you go to the back side of the worksheet where we were writing. Doo -doo -doo. And so take a few minutes. Feel free to pause. Um, but take a few minutes and do these calculations and see what you're getting close to. Again, feel free to pause. I'm not even actually going to fill this out. You guys can use a calculator and fill it out. But the decimals that we are we get as we divide these numbers. So one Fibonacci divided by the one before it gets us closer and closer to the number phi. Some people call it phi. I've mostly heard it phi, um, which is another irrational number, which is called the golden ratio. Okay. And we're going to talk about the golden ratio next, but that's where the guy in the video is headed. He's calculating the golden ratio. Here we go the larger number by the smaller number, then these ratios get closer and closer to about 1.618, known to many people as the golden ratio, a number which has fascinated mathematicians, scientists, and artists for centuries. Now, I show all this to you because, like so much of mathematics, there's a beautiful side to it that I fear does not get enough attention in our schools. We spend lots of time learning about calculation, but let's not forget about application, including perhaps the most important application of all, learning how to think. If I could summarize this in one sentence, it would be this. Mathematics is not just solving for x, it's also figuring out y. <laughs> Thank you very much. 
All right, okay. Just to finish this off while we have our draft paper here, um, that the spiral that we were talking about, if we start in the bottom left corner of our the very first square that we drew, and then kind of make a circle to connect it to the diagonal, like that little curve, and then we're gonna do the same. We're gonna connect this point to that diagonal, and then we're gonna do this one to that diagonal. The sound effects are optional. And this one to this one. And then this one to that one. And this one to that one. And this one to that one. Again, I'm not an artist, but you know, doing the best that I can. That could have been a little bit more curved. And the last one, that's a big one. And that is called the Fibonacci spiral or the golden spiral. And we will talk about that a little bit more when we talk about the golden ratio. All right. I hope this has been fun. Finish your golden ratio calculations and we'll see you next time.